Gujarati women. Okay, welcome to the Sunday Club. Uh, we're delighted to be joined by uh, Suhail Seth, Rajiv Suli, and of course, Abhijit Ben Patel, who thinks I have a problem with vegetarian uh, Gujarati women, which is not the case, Abhijit. I don't have a problem. Be Abhijit Ben, sorry. I don't have a problem with any of this. Uh, so you'll switch off your whatever music or whatever you're listening off. to. Um, I've got nothing, so don't tell me. You were listening to music before we started. Not me. Why, why are you so bossy, Advaita? You, you because can't I got, I got feet in Rajikuli's eyes, man. The ring light is... It's, it it's seems like he's... See, 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 see. Why I'm showing this is that Advaita have paid me. So I bought this ring light. You guys are still asking for the money every time she paid. You have already sent me the event, so I have bought this light. I, I would like to share with the viewers also. Here is it. Look at oh, it. Wow. That's a this big is light. bought with the money paid by Advaita Kala. Lovely. <laughs> You're most welcome. I I like sincere panelists, and uh, I think you. So that's why I am. I was before time today. Two minutes before time. Thank you so much, Rajiv Ji. And we'll start the show with you. As you all know, that Sudbut Ki Sarkar, Adani Ambani, NDTV, oh, during a press conference, Rahul Gandhi said, who's your new owner? So there was so much vitriol and anger from Rahul Gandhi towards Adani. And then suddenly, you see this really new, this new friendship blossoming in uh, Rajasthan, where they're sharing the stage and the Deep Pujwalan is happening and it's all very kind of comfortable and cozy. And then Rahul Gandhi gives like this press con and says that, uh, oh, look, you know, who, which CM can <laughs> refuse 60,000 crores or something of a deal. So anyway, let's just start with Rajiv Ji. Rajiv Ji, what do you make of this new friendship? No, there is nothing. People also understand this. People also understand this. Businessman hai, business karega, PCB states mein, kuch bhi facility, extra facilities, whatever. I mean, whatever is extended uh, as being a good businessman, he will go to that particular state. And every state need industries or their survivors. There are no sarkari jobs. There, are, you know, the there is almost uh, a stagnation in the uh, increase in uh, agriculture produce in the kind of things it depends upon so every 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 state needs uh, industry so usme koi bahut aur log samajhte hain logon ko samajh mein aata hai ki ane ko amani adani wagaira kuch bhi kehte rahe politicians bahut bar logon ko kul mila karke pata hai ki uske uske bina survival nahi hai aapko agar unemployment ki problem ke sath lagna hai aur jis naukri wale mindset mein लोग रहते हैं उसमें अल्टीमेटली तो प्राइवेट सेक्टर ही जॉब्स प्रोवाइड करेगा एंड एवरी स्टेट इज विलिंग टू गो दैट एक्स्ट्रा माइल टू अकोमोडेट इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट लाइक अडानी और अंबानी और टाटा क्वेश्चन रॉन्ग वाई अडानी इज गोइंग टू डू बिजनेस इन राजस्थान इज इज अन ओब्रेन आई मीन ऑफकोर्स वाई नॉट इज राइट नेक्स्ट टू गुजरात इट्स अ गुड लोकेशन he's got uh, he's just bought a cement company he's got his eye on certain aspects of doing business there so that's a no brainer what i'm curious about is that when rahul gandhi is so extremely anti the adani ambani duo how are they kind of explaining this and justifying this isn't that plain hypocrisy i mean is it i puch rahi hu aapse interesting is it uh... Uh, is after the last snub that happened can you get me can you hear me thoda uh, rahul uh, rajiv ji i think you'll have to log out and come back but abhi uh, i'll take the same question to suhail suhail is uh, this, isn't this hypocrisy you know too much is being made of rahul gandhi's comments and intellect he has been stupid even in his rejoinder let me tell you what happens Ashok Gehlot has a state to run. He doesn't have a yatra to march in. For the state to run, he has to promise two things. Livelihood and enduring progress, enduring economic progress. How do you do that without business people? How do you do it? 
So while I have said, and some people on your comments are saying, oh, you said one thing on Ashutosh. The, on Ashutosh, the whole show was about brand fatigue and how Rahul mm. Gandhi's makeover has happened. Mm. It has nothing to do with his silly utterances post the Adani visit. Gautam Adani went for the Invest Rajasthan Summit, of which the partner, one of the partners was also the Confederation of Indian Industry, CII. Mm. We had a national mm. council meeting on that day. Gautam mm. Adani went at the invitation of the Rajasthan Chief Minister. Like in March or April, he went at the invitation of Mamta Banerjee, the Chief Minister of West Bengal. Mm. The Chief Minister of West Bengal also wanted him to invest. Everyone wants every businessman to invest. Now, Mahua Maitra earlier may have made some comment. I don't know if it was Mahua or whoever else from the TMC. They made a comment against Adani. But it was rebuffed by the fact that Mamta Banerjee had him. Now, again, I don't blame a Mahua or I don't blame a Rahul Gandhi. They are two separate silos, as it were. There is a political silo and there's a reality silo. The political silo, you make statements and utterances because you think you're getting political mileage. As far as the, the economic or the reality silo is, they've got to get economic progress going. What did Narendra Modi do till 2014? from 2002 to 2014 in Gujarat. He wooed industry. He was the person who started vibrant Gujarat. Then all the states followed. Why? Because he believed that without economic, uh, 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 what should I say, without economic progress, there is nothing to write home about. What do you show for yourself? So I have no issues with both these people saying whatever they have to. Ashok Gelord has literally a business to run. Rahul Gandhi still believes he's running an NGO. Okay. Um, Abhijit Ben, I mean, you are, of course, a very, very tapped into uh, business and you have an entrepreneurial mind. And we know, like, Rahul took a lot of time, uh, you know, spent a lot of time on Sudbut Ki Sarkar. He's been positively, like, abusive about Ambani and Adani. What, what, I mean, and then I guess politics is an, is the art of hypocrisy, right? And then you turn around and say, which PM could re refuse 60,000 crores, et cetera, et cetera. But hello, dude, we're talking about the fact that you couldn't stop criticizing them for years and years and years and years. Mm. Do you remember the first uh, BJP government in which Jaswan Singh was the uh, home minister, I think? Uh, no, the finance minister, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, in those days, they were going after, was it Enron or something for, uh, the BJP had opposed the entire project tooth and nail. And the moment Jaswan Singh comes to power, he okays the project. And in the interview, I remember he said, you know, uh, government should never be vindictive. So remember the same Ambani Adani who Rahul is going after today, he will be crying at their feet tomorrow for investment if and when he comes to power. Of course, that is never happening. Not in my lifetime, not in Suhail's lifetime and not in your lifetime. Even though you're much younger to us, I'm uh, fairly uh, confident of predicting that uh, even in your lifetime, he's not coming to power. Now, what, what does Rahul need to do? He needs to create an economic crisis. Remember, the whole reason Trump lost re-election was because of the economic crisis that COVID triggered. Right? The problem here is, with Rahul, this government is Teflon-coated when it comes to economic crises. They don't seem to get into any economic crises. So Rahul basically wants to generate some kind of an economic crisis, which is realistically, if you look at it, it's his only real shot at power. Because you tell me what person in a sane and stable state of mind would go and vote for him. So you need to create rage. He tried creating rage with, you know, uh, 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 politics of division, fascism, all that. That didn't work. Then when he tries India as a union of states, the rage is against him, not against the person it was meant to uh, induce rage against. And so finally, the third option is and this has all he's always played all three options. Remember that uh, from day one, the way suit boot ki sarkar hobbled reforms for two three years after which the BJP lost momentum because remember the BJP was 
uh, uh, the opposition had no momentum in the first six months because they never expected a absolute majority sarkar to be formed after 30 years right and that wind got knocked out and after that the bjp was in the back foot so he thinks he can keep piling up the pressure like this create an economic crisis create stasis in the economy etc cetera, etc cetera. it's not working like everything he touches to he's got the anti midas touch you see, everything that King Midas touches turns to gold. Everything that Rahul Gandhi uh, touches turns to shit. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. You know, and the other thing, uh, Suhail, uh, people are saying is that this is also an act of rebellion by Ashok Gelot, keeping in mind. Not at all. Ashok the, Gelot is uh, openly. No, uh, anti-Gandhi anti anti -Gandhi rebellion also, because. Rahul Gandhi is perceived to be so anti Ambani, Ambani and Adani in particular. Look, let me tell you. Rahul Gandhi is anti no one. Rahul Gandhi needs to score a point against Narendra Modi. What points can he score? The only thing he can accuse Narendra Modi is of capital cronyism. Now, let me explain to you about Gautam Adani. Gautam Adani is in the infrastructure business. A port doesn't get made in one, two, five, eight. It gets made in about 12, 13 years. Narendra Modi has been in PAF. This is eighth year. So all this started during the Congress regime, which obviously Rahul Gandhi doesn't know or doesn't understand. Number two, everything that Gautam Adani has done has been done through a tendering process, whether it is airports, whether it is everything else. It's not that he's stolen the airport under someone's eyes or he's taken it thanks to you. Uh, who still has a fly in her hair, but we'll come to that later. So Gautam Adani has done everything by the book or else he would have been taken to court. There are enough people for, on behalf of the Congress also who will file PILs. That's not happened. Number three, if Gautam Adani is invited by a state chief minister, that state chief minister also needs uh, 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 development in his state. The airport in Jaipur is, is operated by Adani. It makes more sense. What has Adani been asked for? What has he been promised? He has asked to help. Uh, Ashok Gellert wants him to help in the medical development, the infrastructure for medical care, health care. Then education. Is Rahul Gandhi opposed to this? So please, let's not go there. You know, this continuous nonsense, and I said this on other programs, and I will say this again. This constant attack on industry and industrialists doesn't behove Rahul Gandhi for one reason. It is impossible for India to develop if our industry doesn't develop. To continuously target industrialists, to berate them, to make them seem like pariahs, you are only dissuading them from then investing in this country and they can go out and invest. Would that be a play? Would that be something that Rahul Gandhi wants? Can he give, can he give even one person one job? We all get this. We all get this. It's just that when you've been going hammer and tongs at somebody for the last eight, nine years, and then the height of hypocrisy is to turn around and say, well, which... Why do you, but listen, again, but you're but making a fundamental mistake. Why do you say that Ashok Gelot is being rebellious? Ashok Gelot is being intelligent. He's using his brain. So let me ask Pallavi that. Pallavi... What does Pallavi know here? Pallavi is <laughs> That's why she knows now because she's always covering things and meeting people, unlike you chilling in Goa. Pallavi, you're on mute. Pallavi, you're on mute. Abhijit's on mute and he's trying to tell you your. Mute. Hmm. Abhijit is saying hi to me. Abhijit and I have a date. Yeah. A couple of days later, right? Okay. Yes. So yeah. come back to uh, uh, Ashok Gelod. Uh, I, I would uh, rebellious to a certain extent. I think he really made it very difficult for the Congress party and more importantly for Rahul Gandhi. And therefore, at that press conference, I think Rahul Gandhi's uh, argument that we are not against corporates. And if you if you see the backstory, in fact, just hours before the press conference, Supriya Srinate, who incidentally has also been covering the finance ministry herself when she was a journalist, she did a press conference where she said, you know, we've never been against any corporate. We've never been against any of the big two, which Rahul Gandhi keeps on mentioning. Uh, I would see that as a much uh, U-turn. And um, and I think Ashok Gellert essentially forced uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi to 
say what he said. I mean, and what I agree with Suhail. I mean, there's nothing wrong absolutely with Ashok Gehlot is beating. I mean, Mamata Banerjee, for example, remember her Shingur movement where people yeah. said, oh, she's against the corporates. Recently, she did an Invest Bengal where she said, you know, I want more and more people to come and invest. That's the way you do. And this much also I can tell you, Agneta, that when Captain Amrinder Singh was a Punjab chief minister, when Kamal Nath was a Madhya Pradesh chief minister, <coughs> especially Captain would be very open about the fact that we cannot keep on attacking the corporates. We need them. We need them because for the development in our state. And also we cannot be seen as an anti-corporate. You know, if you listen to Rahul Gandhi's press conference, he also tried to make the point, oh, we are not against corporates. You cannot be a political party who wants to offer itself as an alternative to be seen as an NGO. That is exactly what the Congress party was looking like. And I think they wanted to set that record straight because, mind you, many people in the Congress party are very, very uncomfortable with these attacks on corporates which Rahul Gandhi kept on making. And they had no other choice. They had to defend him. They had to support him. But in private, they would admit that, you know, we, I, we don't think that's the right policy to have. We cannot be a Jola holding, Jola chap kind of a politician. You need all kinds of people and you certainly need the corporates because they're adding to the economy. They're giving you jobs. You cannot talk about unemployment on one hand and then be against the corporates on the other. Hmm. But, you know, Pallavi, it's really not corporates, is it? I mean, he's particularly targeted Amani and Adani. You know, he's particularly zeroed in on these two. He may have a wider, like, leftist sort of yeah, inclination. But, you know, if you keep on attacking these two... Yeah. yeah, but if you attack these two, they are corporates, right? I, I, and then they are always going to be your opponents who are going to build up this perception about you that, you know, you're attacking them and they're corporates, they're business people, they're giving jobs to people, so on and so forth. So it is something which is going to be uh, backfiring on them. I mean, let's talk about even Bhupesh Baghel. I mean, many of the contracts have been given to people. And one big project everyone knows about was given to someone who Rahul Gandhi would consistently attack. How do you explain that? I mean, Ashok Gellert was more in your face. But it's not the first time. Randeep Surjewala also, I remember, when he was a PWD minister and the power minister when Congress was in power in Haryana, they were giving contracts to these very two people which Rahul Gandhi keeps on attacking. So it's, it's the double standards which is often coming out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Abhijit Ben, do you think that, you know, this is going to now lead to some kind of recalibration on behalf of the Congress or on Congress's part uh, in terms of what approach they want to take? Because in this particular instance, Rahul Gandhi's come across as very hypocritical because you spend all these years attacking someone. And then when your chief minister gets it goes into business with them, you say, well, you know, who can not accept this and remember as recently as two three weeks ago when that big new ndtv takeover by adani news came in a press con in front of other journalists he basically called out ndtv and said like who's your new owner so it's very personal with uh, between rg and adani for some reason from rg's side adani doesn't say anything and adani tv uh, that's what it's going to become mm -hmm. but uh, basically what happens here is you know, the Congress during independence movement was known as the party of big business, which mm -hmm. is why when, you know, the first uh, elected government was formed pre-independence, where Jinnah's party got the finance ministry, the first thing he did was to screw over the industrialists who were financing the Congress party. Correct. Hmm. So isn't it curious that he is turning on the same people who built the Congress's legacy? The Congress was able to give India independence only because those same big business people who he's spitting at. In those days, it was different. It was the Tatas and the Birlas in those days. The Tatas continue, the Birlas are nowhere to be seen. But uh, they were the ones who funded the entire independence campaign. Agar big business na hota, to na hi to Congress party hoti, na hi to uh, uh, Angrez Mukt Bharat hota. Hmm. Okay. Number one. Number two, the problem with Rahul is he has never listened to anyone. He will never listen to anyone. Okay. I think everybody we speak to in the Congress is uniform on this. He does not listen. He uh, And when he does do a, uh, a sit down with you, then he, he's wandering and talking about things that nobody has any clue about. Access to him is guarded by a small coterie. And that coterie is basically in, you know, serious resource uh, scarcity mode. 
which is everything. All the resources have to be cornered for us. Nobody else can be allowed within this uh, uh, little cabal. So what do you do? And he doesn't seem to get it. See, even look at it from his point of view. Every day, assume he meets 20 people. With his lack of discipline, I'm, uh, he'll probably meet 20 people in uh, 20 days, one per day. But let's mm -hmm. assume he's a normal politician who at the very least would meet 20 people a day. Uh, before, there'd be a line, during the UPA government, there'd be a line of about 200 requests out of whom 20 uh, would be guaranteed. Today, there's about 21, 22 requests of which 20 are guaranteed. As far as he's concerned, he's just as popular. <laughs> he, keeps, huh? he keeps getting fated by all these celebrities uh, mm. go, go to London on that uh, what that logically AI company sponsored that London thing where he went and uh, uh, made a buffoon of himself uh, and that uh, lady interviewer was like uh, uh, what yeah, from Oxford yeah that professor from Oxford uh -huh. and uh, uh, he thought he came off really well because she was also clapping and every the audience was all clapping for all his stupid answers. Mm. Right? You remember that photo that was tweeted of him in the rain? I could only see about a, a row, a, a, a crescent surrounding him that was about 10, 15 people deep because behind that there were strobe lights and you couldn't see how many people were there. Do, do you know how many people were there? Nobody knows. Mm. Right. So there is this whole thing where he simp he does not even listen to well-intentioned advice. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Because he, first of all, you have to feel that accountability. His sense of validation comes from all these left-wing intellectuals. And I have it on very good authority that one of these intellectuals responsible for the food uh, security bill in the UPA he apparently wasn't obsequious enough when a certain economics Nobel laureate told him, my dear friend, you know, tell him you're my intellectual heir. And so very obsequiously, he told him you are my intellectual heir and the, uh, lo and behold, he was put on the NAC. Mm -hmm. Hence the food security bill. So they all know how to give him that validation. Mm -hmm. And that is the validation he seeks. That is the validation he craves. Mm -hmm. Because he is not like mere mortals like us. Okay. He is in this august divine company. His mother, after all, got the order of whatnot from European royalty. You know, the Queen of Belgium used to uh, 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 hang out uh, shopping buddies with his mother. So he feels that he is in the same level as King Charles and he feels that like King Charles is Raja Hua or I am not Raja. Raja is very Exactly. Mm. Uh, he, uh, uh, King Charles III will pro pro most probably do very well. Rahul doesn't realize that he is probably more like King Charles I. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Sohail, um, actually, I want to ask this of Pallavi before I come to Sohail. Uh, here's a question. Uh, is, it too little to, is it a little too late for Gelot? Will he survive to the next term? I mean, I can't say, but I I, I can only say I won't be too survive, uh, surprised if he survives and he stays on. I mean, he's certainly playing his cards very well. And uh, I don't know. I mean, if the Gandhis want to show that they are the boss, then they'll do something like, okay, let's get rid of Ashok Gelod. He rebelled. So long, everything is going along ac according to script. I mean, it's perfect the way the elections are being held. Malika Jun Karge is ahead. He has the numbers. You have a Shashi Tharoor thrown in. So you send out this perception. Okay, look, we are having a real democracy and Rahul Gandhi says there will be no remote control. And then as far as Ashok Gelot is concerned, we've tamed him, we've shown him his place. But then you have a Rahul Gandhi who had to defend him uh, when those pictures of him in the Invest Summit came out. And then many people said, look, this is Ashok Gelot's way of showing to the Gandhi that, you know, I am my own boss. So I will not be too surprised. I can only take a safe option by saying I won't be too surprised if Gelot manages to stay on to his job. How are they then going to placate, manage Sachin Pallet? I mean, that is going to be big. All the guys are going to throw it on a new president. Malika Jun Kharge ne call liya. Malika Jun Kharge that he's the boss. We are no one to take a call. Remember, the promises and assurances were made by the Gandhis. To fulfill or not fulfill is now going to be led to Malika Jun Kharge. So he's going to end up being the bad guy, whatever may the decision may be. Hmm. You know, Sohil, this gets no, me to... Sudhir, I disagree. I have to answer Sudhir. He is visiting temples. 
Acha Janeo he is not showing, but yeah, he is visiting the temple very much down south. Yes, sir. Why that? So, Hill, you know, you were waxing eloquent on uh, Ashutosh's channel about how brand Rahul Gandhi is really re-emerging. So, um, do you know? Do you do you think that uh, this kind of ambivalence? He said that? Yeah, yeah, did he, he did. Yeah. Did you see the program? No, you I'm only going saw by, I, I'm going did by the clip. The program? Exactly. Answer my question. Did you see the program? No, you didn't. <laughs> Your I don't know. I don't know what to do on the YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channel. You have seen the review of the picture. You have the program. You have seen one tweet of Ashutosh's. How do you know what context that tweet was written in? I don't have know. you seen I'm... the program, Bita? You haven't seen it. It, it, was, it, was, it was just it was, it was really very uh, revealing. But as I said... <laughs> one minute. First though, you haven't seen the program, but you're commenting on it. <laughs> That in itself is a terrible travesty of response. I've seen the clip. I've seen the clip. I've seen the clip. He had, he had, oh, uh, the, it's and like in you fact, becoming a reviewer of Satyajit Ray's Apu trilogy by seeing one frame. And in fact, the clip was sent to me. He says, Do you know what he's doing on other channels? So I said, What? Oh, one minute, one minute. Let me tell so you he, what the program was about. Brand the it was contextualized to an earlier program on Priya Segal's News X, where mm. I said that since Mr. Modi is on television, national television, and he has been for the last eight years from morning to night, all brands go through what we call brand fatigue. It was a marketing discussion, which, you know, you're mm. far removed from. In that context, I said, <clears throat> where Rahul Gandhi is concerned is, the beginnings of a makeover. I didn't say re-emerging. I don't use words like that. That's for Pallavi. I said the makeover has I begun. I followed it up with an article which came out in Open Magazine where I defined what is happening. A, in this Bharat Jodo Yatra, what he's planning to do and what the pitfalls are. So on Ashutosh's program, I even mentioned the pitfalls. I said the problem with Rahul Gandhi is he's inconsistent. He lacks staying power. He mm -hmm. lacks strategy. All these things seem to be coming together. There I also mentioned Jairam Ramesh, who had famously called a dolt in 2014, and I haven't changed my views largely. I said that Jairam Ramesh, as the head of the communications department, has made one change. The Congress mm -hmm. is taking everything lying down. They are retaliating, whether they retaliate through letters, through FIRs, through complaints. So they're getting more and more aggressive. This is what I said. So now to say, oh, you said re-emerging not, you have to contextualize everything better. Okay, okay, so now tell me, what is the context of Rahul Gandhi's ideology, considering he spent the better part of the last eight years abusing Adani and, and then, you know, kind of but commenting. Why do you, why do you think politicians... What is his ideology? ideology? Is he is he moving Advaita, out of the NGO? Advaita, I, will, I, will, I will tell you this. I will tell you this. And this is true of all political parties. Their only single-minded ideology is expediency in order to win elections. They have hmm. no ideology. By that logic, the same Mr. Modi who disapproved of GST, approved of it. Who disapproved Manrega, approved of it. Who disapproved this, approved of it. ये एक बात है जब आप सत्ता में आते हो ना जो आपने सत्ता पाने के लिए कहा था वो आप सत्ता में आके शायद कर नहीं पाओगे सो द ड्यूअलिटी एंड द हिपोक्रेसी एग्जिस्ट अक्रॉस ऑल पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज एंड ऑल पॉलिटिशियंस देयर सिंगल माइंडेड एजेंडा इज टू विन वोट्स यू टेल मी इन द यूके टुडे द रेजिंग डिबेट इज दैट द टोरीज आर रिजेंबलिंग अ वर्स फॉर्म ऑफ लेबर now, mm -hmm. aap bolo, what ideology does Rahul Gandhi talk about? Secularism? They were the ones who destroyed secularism. He talks about uh, cronyism. They were the ones who encouraged cronyism. Patronage? They were the ones who encouraged patronage. So please understand, I don't give any marks or I don't place any merit on what people are saying. Ki, oh, you know, what's his ideology? Their ideology is to win votes. But this is what I said on Ashutosh's Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> this is what I said on Ashutosh's program. This is very important for you because you haven't heard the pro you haven't seen the program. I've seen that clip. 
मीडिया at least in delhi the national media which is the comparative grid then you know for, on like to like basis they are talking about the bharat jodo yatra but you like but, it or not no no one minute aap aap jo bhi bolo they are talking about it only talk on this on the show no let other people come in now okay. pallavi pallavi now tell me one thing hasn't the media always the national media hasn't it always been quite pro rahul gandhi Oh, I mean, no, have we been look always? Right. I mean, well, if you look at the yeah. right they gave Prime Minister Modi pre twenty fourteen, okay, and if they're giving a rough time to Rahul Gandhi now, it's because of the change in fortunes to certain extent. But there has always been like a weak spot for uh, him all along, as far as the national media is concerned. Yeah, I think they are more forgiving of Rahul Gandhi. They are more critical of say the. Congress Party, yes, we are more critical of the Congress Party. I mean, if you know the difference, I'm more forgiving of Rahul Gandhi. Um, you know, like bechara him and his coterie and his people. They don't let him do that, making him look very helpless, which I don't agree with at all. Because you also choose your coterie, and it, as a politician, you also have to be very, very careful about the kind of people you want to listen to. And he's not a bechara. I mean, come on, I'm sure if you're in politics, you should be also making your own decisions. So his mistakes are his mistakes. But yeah, I mean, uh, if the Congress Party today wants to say that we have always uh, targeted him and uh, he's been called Papu and so on and so forth, I I have covered the Congress Party, so I know this for a fact that 2009, uh, 14, 14 elections, 13, 14 elections, where we got an idea that in fact the Narendra Modi is going to be contesting as a prime minister. I've seen the kind of personal attacks, and anyone who has met Mr. Modi or people close to him do know that I think the only thing really hurts him still is the fact that he felt that he always got those personal. It also, you know, if today the Congress says the attack on the Gandhis is personal for Modi, I think the Congress did it more to him because I've covered Congress on the other side, so I also saw how it was happening. It actually became personal for making fun of his English to the fact that yes. how he likes to dress up and. You know, making fun of his English, particularly he can't speak English. It's going to be an embarrassment. Not giving him visa, wow. stopping it, so on and so on. He's just another chief minister. I remember. I mean, he's no longer alive, but Emma G. I remember we met for a debriefing, and we asked him that do you want to respond to the fact that he's going to be the PM? He said, "No, no, he's the Prime Minister. I mean, no, we don't want to lower our standards by responding to a CM. You know, this is the way they spoke about him." And later on, they admitted their mistake that they underestimated him, and the fact that you know he's someone who could emerge as a big player in the national level politics. So yeah, I think we have tend to you know we tend to be more forgiving of Rahul Gandhi. And I'm as a person who covers the Congress Party, I'm I'm on and I I get it for both the sides, more from the mm. Congress these days. I do notice that the Godi and the selective outrage is something which is very perturbing, you know, like. Uh, let's take of the example of the picture of Rahul Gandhi tying the shoelace uh, and putting an arm around his mother. People found it cute. Congress beat reporters; most of them found it very cute. I also found it cute. It's fine. But when the prime minister meets his mother on his birthday, yeah. then they say it's a photo op. That for me was double standards, and they're still not stopping. You are still seeing tweets coming in from the Congress's official handle taking pot shots. I mean, you know. Uh, as a very, uh, it's very interesting. A very senior Congress leader just banged into him in my favorite Khan market, and he told me, "Here, yeah, mother is a mother. That is one mm. emotion no political party should play around with, and that's, that's a mistake which the Congress leaders are making if they're going to start taking pot shots and you know because it's it's going to come back to hit you also. So I think that. especially yeah, a mother who's too hungry. Chogi that chor he came to bite him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even I even mean, what so Lana Pia Zad said that we have to talk about chaprasis and you know they have absolutely no sense of the changing India and how India has changed today. It is mm. no longer about whose son or daughter you are. It's about merit. It's about hard work. 
Mm. Modi and Amit Shah working 18, 18 hours a day. So, you know, they have to understand this. Hmm. Abhijit, we have to bring you back on air. Tell me one thing, you know, I, uh, I, you, you know, this whole Godi media narrative. And uh, I know you're somebody who tracks and watches the media very closely. Do you think there was, and, and uh, Suhail used the, you know, royal family analogy when it came to the Gandhis, or did you use it? One of you used it. I used it, it Raja and Rang. No, no, the royal family, the British royal family. So I think, you yeah, know, there was, a, <coughs> there was a tendency uh, to feel a certain entitlement, you know, for, for coverage and a certain type of coverage, which was, which was kind of like, you know, subservient, you know, which sort of discussed politics, but then the Gandhis were at this other level, which was, which was above politics, right? And uh, that was what they were used to. Now, suddenly, that's not what they're receiving. And that can, I can understand from their point of view how that could be a jolt to the system. But does that, does that necessarily translate into the media being sold out? To them, it does. Hmm. Right? So uh, imagine you've been used to something for 70 years. And all of a sudden, this sort of, um, you know, so for example, there are rules that govern the British royal family. You don't take pictures of the young princes. So Prince George or George uh, Louis. Princess Louis and all of them. There, there's no uh, is it Prince Louis and Princess? Prince George? Louis, Princess Charlotte and Prince George. Yeah. So you don't take pictures of them. Uh, there's only two pictures of them allowed every year. You don't discuss anything to do with the kids in the press till they achieve majority, etc. etc. Right. Uh, they felt that these rules apply to them. Hmm. And to nobody else. Now, all of a sudden, after 70 years, if that consensus is broken, right, what do you think their reaction is going to be? Hmm. As far as they're concerned, nothing has changed. So for them, anybody who talks about them in a pedestrian fashion, for them, it's virtually les majeste, you know, the insult to the king kind of uh, law. Uh, that they are, that obviously you've taken money in order to slander us who are the mm. founding fathers of India. Mm. Look at it from their point of view. They actually believe this. Mm. They're not being disingenuous about it. The problem is that the rest of the Congress understand what is happening. And so other people, like, say, Jairam Ramesh or, and uh, Surjewala and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they are being disingenuous when they say Biki Hui media, Godi media and things like that because they realize what has happened, but then they have to take the line that gets dictated from above. Right. Uh, so do you remember what happened when uh, Rahul Gandhi tore up the ordinance when Manmohan Singh was prime minister? Yeah. And then was it Surjewala or Makan who came on stage and said, uh, Rahul is the leader of our party. So whatever he says is the party line. Hmm. Right. Now, had any other Congress worker done the same thing, he would have been hmm. served a show of notice and expelled from the primary membership of the uh, 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 Congress for that no. kind of difference. And yet yeah. Rahul had no official post in the party, was able to make it the party line in defiance of the Prime Minister. So understand hmm. the sort of preferential treatment that they have been used to. Hmm. Right? So for somebody, now not all of us are kings, so we can't understand this. So let me give you a simple example. For those of the viewers who have flown business class, where you will get champagne, proper champagne, not cheap, dirty, sparkling wine, proper champagne, French champagne. Uh, if you are suddenly that traveling... Must be in French, by the way. Right. If it's called champagne, that means it's French. It's implicit right. in the name. Exactly. Yeah. Now, suddenly, uh, as far as you are concerned, because you didn't have the sort of, uh, you know, 272 lakhs required to buy a 2.72 lakhs required to buy a business class ticket, and you could only afford 53, uh, 5 point, uh, 0.53, 53,000 rupees to buy a economy class ticket. And you get served not even wine. You get served some pissy little Chardonnay for $7 a bottle. Are you talking about Qatar Airways that you flew not too long ago? No, no, no. I'm talking about 272 versus 53. Okay. <laughs> I you, thought you were digressing. 
<laughs> I I don't fly airlines that don't serve champagne. Papa, please. So, you flew Qatar and they served some sparkling wine from Italy, and you were terrified. No, they they also had the option of a sparkling wine, but that was a Veuve Clicquot uh, uh, red, which was very nice. But anyway, uh, uh, so see, you always uh, off track me. So here, please yell at her, yeah. She always off track. Oh, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't watch programs. You comment on them. You don't. <laughs> so shut up about that. You just hear. <laughs> you want, you want, I gave you an opportunity to clarify. Think of it positively. Pictures of Tiana ka nala and then claim you're in New York and flying Cathay Pacific business class and whatnot rubbish. So I don't fly Cathay. Cathay. I'd have now to listen. go the other if I flew Cathay. If, yeah. if you have two seventy two and you are used to flying business class, and get served champagne and meals on demand, and hmm. suddenly at fifty three, you only get economy class ticket. You will be absolutely flummoxed at why they don't serve you meals on demand and why they don't serve you champagne and giving you this busy little chardonnay. Hmm. Okay, and you will suspect that the airline is conspiring against you. Hmm. That's what these guys have been used to. It's literally that. What do you hmm. do? It shows you the level of their detachment from the Indian public discourse. It shows you the level to which the courtiers have separated the uh, Raj Khandan hmm. from the Raja. But I mean, I do think Jairam Ramesh is making an effort. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt about it. He is kind of trying to redefine, uh, you know, how the Congress is speaking. I mean, I think that disaster of no, one minute, one minute. No. again, you have no idea of context. What Abhijit said is very true. <clears throat> when the presidential elections were ongoing in the Congress, as they still are, hmm. Jairam Ramesh said that is a sideshow. The main show is the Bharat Jodo Yatra. How can you, as the corporate communications chief of the Congress Party, you're not the Cong you're not the communications chief of Rahul Gandhi Incorporated. How can you make such a snide, snarky comment, thereby dissing not only a presidential election but everything that goes with it? Tell me. I mean, that to my mind tells you of the civility. You know, they are more loyal to the king than the king himself. I used to say this of certain advertising people in the good old days. They, <clears throat> they jump when they're asked to walk and they only ask how high. Civility today has become the birthmark of the Congress because of what Abhijit said. It is and will remain a feudal uh, uh, enterprise unless they are generally, which is why I said earlier, even on your program, it's important for Shashi Tharoor to win. But he won't. But he won't, yeah. We it's know also that. important for him not to have walked away. Hmm. Which he has. In not walking away, in not walking away, he has actually sounded the only ever bugle of revolt. By saying, I know you would have ideally wanted me to walk away, but I'm not walking away. Hmm. 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 Well, you know, um, I think I think Jairam Ramesh, again, since Suhail loves the word context, I think the context of his comment was really the fact that the messaging was going completely out of control. You had the you had the Bharat Jodo Yatra happening. I don't know. I mean, I don't know who handles their scheduling, frankly. And then you have the Congress election happening. So while that's so that cannibalizes the media attention for the Bharat Jodo Yatra. And then when they have the Congress election going, you have the Rajasthan crisis CM crisis take place. So I, I frankly feel Jairam Ramesh said it to try and refocus the media attention on the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Now, whether he, he should have done that, it should that have been the priority for the party vis-a-vis -vis the uh, presidential election? That's up for debate because the Bharat Jodo Yatra as of now is about someone who's an MP in the Congress party, technically. The Congress presidential election is about somebody who's going to be the president of the party. So they're two very different things and two very different uh, entities involved. Uh, you know, Abhijit, this is a good question that's come in. Uh, TRS, we saw them come in the, uh, you know, come into the fray. So while uh, this Bharat Jodo Yatra is going on, trying to reestablish, you know, Rahul Gandhi as the, the opposition face of the country, uh, you have um, in the South, Interestingly, where I think the Congress thinks it has most traction as of now, you have TRS kind of saying, 
where now the Bharatiya, what is it, Rashtriya, who can help me here, my viewers, my clever viewers? Bharatiya Rashtriya Samiti. Oh. Rashtriya Samiti or something, huh? What do you think of TRS's uh, game for national prominence? Nothing here. Big thing. No? It's like you saying, I'm going to form a party. Are are you let you know what is wrong with you today? You are I'm very angry. Speak. Don't let him speak. <laughs> no, no, I'm just he saying. Is Everybody. Gali, he needs to go on shows. You start a political party. Baba Ji, what will happen? No, no. You start one, no, Suhail. I've always told you, you can be like... Mary, uh, boss, one minute, yeah. Even my wife won't vote for me. Even you won't <laughs> vote for me. Why the hell would I start? I vote for you. I vote for you, Suhail. Yeah, he will vote for me because he's central. And, 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 my viewers, these viewers will vote for me. Abhijit is very clever. He knows it's a secret ballot. Here he'll say, I'll vote for you. Then sneaky guy will go in there and vote no, for someone no, else. No, yes, he'll 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 stuff I, in would, room. I would urge you to also try and develop that bone in your body. Develop a bone I, called integrity. Yeah. Who are you telling Abhijit? Okay. Abhijit, no, you. are you listening? No, I will develop a bone called integrity. But I mean, ballot for your friend. So you're you're from the other side of the Vindyas. Are you excited by TRS becoming BRS? Hello, madam. Get Tamil. We are Tamil. Okay, get the difference. Other side of the Okay, okay, okay. I will answer this. Okay, how many Tamil CMs has it had? How many Tamil CMs? Tell me all this. We are Tamil. How many Tamil CMs have you all had? Please tell me. Tamil Nadu, see, we're a very open society. We have a Tamil CM in a very long time. Jalalita was a Kannadiga. The Karnanadi family is Telugu. MGR was Malayali. I think huh. EPS was the first uh, uh, Tamil chief minister of Tamil Nadu in a very long time. Hmm. Yeah. But, I'm but very see, that's how open-minded we are. Because, uh, you know, Tamil yeah. culture is the mother culture of the entire Madrasi culture. So, you know, we <laughs> absorb all the other cultures. <laughs> Tamil culture is the mother culture of the entire Madrasi culture. Quote, unquote. Should I tweet hmm. that? Because that's exactly what you said. Yeah, sure. Now, listen to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Because again, you interrupt when I'm making an important point. TRS is an also ran. They will not have, they can't even manage the same Hindi nuances and idioms that even Mamta Banerjee can manage and Arvind Kejriwal can definitely manage. And India is unfortunately, whether we like it or not, one in the Hindi belt. The question is, who is going to break through in the Hindi belt? Because Arvind yeah. Kejriwal has broken through in the Punju belt. And Delhi is technically South Punjab. Okay. Hmm. One visit to all your uh, Gurgaon, Noida Wadi, uh, Kitty Party aunties with, that you hang out with, you know that Punjabi is the link. You hang out with, actually. I'm no longer there, you but mean, I know that you are the one there. You are the one that gets drunk every weekend, drinking companies <laughs> of black label. You can't even drink a proper single malt. You want all your cheap blended black label. And even worse, you drink red label. Yeah, no, I'll be honest with what? you. Honest with you. Honest. And we are your friends. I think you should go easy on the alcohol. Yeah, I think Keep you quiet. You guys talk such crap. No, it's not even... Who needs what? friends? Who needs enemies when they're friends like you? With your, no, with your... the, the phrase is, who That's needs me. friends when we have enemies like you? You're getting, you're getting everything wrong today. Abhi, who is uh, going to... Utra hai, na? Atha, go the, ahead. The is still there, Atha, Look at this. Atha, Naman Kandapal. He's also forgotten the content. He's only focusing on your jhumkas. Ah, Can you imagine? Absolutely. I'll tell you a very good way of getting your alcohol consumption down. Stop drinking <laughs> Black Dog and Red Label and other sasta sasta whiskey. Go in for proper Japanese single malts or Taiwanese <laughs> single malts. <laughs> Yamazaki. Exactly. Have one of those. Don't, basically, Guys, don't buy a bottle that's oh, under. You're so lucky I have a sense of humor. My God. Anyway. But I have, to say, Advaita, I, have to, I have to go now, but I have to say that Abhijit and I admire you. We get nothing. We get Babaji ka thullu from you by coming on this program. We have enriched you. We have made you relevant. Uh, yes. uh, uh, you will also get onto this journey where you will get a reward ultimately. But we actually <laughs> are very, very fond of you. We think you're a good human being. You've got a great soul. Uh, you're an interruptive little uh, sweet... Uh, uh, Today I have been. 
because everybody in my previous show said you have, to stop, from your hair. you have to stop letting Suhail and uh, Abhijit troll you. So I said, that's true. Why do I let you guys troll me? You've done it again. We are not you trolling see? here. We are all friends. friends. We are holding a hand and angry discussion on television. There, there, there. Day. Look, at our, look at our wise viewers. There you go. Are you go. mad, Mr. John? Hello, Mr. I'm a lady. Hello, how can I be misogynistic? You just, just misgendered me. I want action taken against this fellow. I want the uh, organizer to ban this fellow who called, say, misogynistic. How can you call me a man? I self-identify as a woman. Do you get my pronouns right? He he's he's literally performed verbal female uh, female genital mutilation. <laughs> I want a police report made against this fellow. <laughs> female genital mutilation is illegal in this country. I love that. Okay, guys. Jai Hind. Jai, Jai Bharat. Jai Advaita. Jai Avijit. Jai Ho. Nail seat, and I will vote for you, Suhail. And I will blackmail your wife into voting for you also. Don't worry. Superb. His wife will not vote for him. Lakshmi, no chance. Jai Ho. God bless you. She all. loves me. She will vote where I tell her to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forget God it. bless you. She's much smarter than that. Okay. In fact, we need to get Lakshmi on the show. Then maybe yeah. they'll behave. That'll yeah. Be okay. <laughs> but thank you everybody for watching and we will catch you very very soon and it's been super fun this evening we were light we were fun oh wait there's a quick one for you AIM I have a question for AIM and Suhail regarding India abstaining from the UN resolutions regarding China and Russia if in, is India testing the patience of the West quickly <coughs> before we uh, he, uh, this wasn't about testing the patience of the West this was self-harm Hmm. This was self-harm because uh, this really wasn't about the West. Us sending Devendra Fadnavis to Moscow was about the West. Hmm. Biden had a call with Modi uh, and the very next, and uh, Biden told Modi, see, you have uh, uh, rattled the boat enough in Kashmir. Ab thoda aur mat karo. It, it puts us in a very difficult position. The very next day, Modi decided to send Amit Shah to uh, Kashmir. Jake, rock the boat. Don't rock the boat. Bloody sink the boat. That was about the West. This is a typical process of self-harm. Mm. And the uh, foreign office spokesperson, and it shows you what a third-rate foreign uh, 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 press corps we have, uh, as in the Indian press corps that follow the foreign beat Indian journalists, how third-rate they are, that when the uh, foreign office spokesperson says, we do not vote on country-specific resolutions, I can show you 10, 10 times we have voted on Israel-specific resolutions in the last 5-6 years. Mm. So, th this is the problem in our country. Because you see, the uh, foreign, uh, uh, the uh, Indian, the foreign beat journalists, they won't get junkets or whatever. They won't get privileged access and all of that. So they have to go along with this. But this was never about the best. This was about harming ourselves. And I just want to say, I think Amit Shah was fantastic in Kashmir. Yes, I think he was too. I think he was just brilliant. And he was... Amit Shah, I only criticize Modi because Amit Shah, I generally have no complaints about. I know. Except I know. his health. He needs to improve his health. Boss, we're counting on him. Maybe it's the, uh, okay, never mind. No, no, he is going to improve his health. And I think, I mean, just just the things he said, the the optics, the uh, the outreach, the fearlessness, I think it was brilliant. Brilliant. Dhamma the calendar he was. One last thing. Listen, we need to start our car and car and hotel reviews. We were, we were, we were. We, we need to at least start the car one, hotel one, I'm not sure. But Papa car one. Bhagavan. So you, you, you're, the one, you're the one you're the one you're the one with the fancy car which one you want to itni kanjusi hai kanjus kanjus chudel ki tarah hai bal dekh tera medusa ki tarah hai usme pata nahi kya kya saap ug rahe hain wo safed wo jo pigeon ne tumhare bal pe tatti karke rakha hai wo kabutar ne wo dekho ha kiya hai kiya hai kiya hai ekdam kiya hai or tum wo uh, wo Hamlet ki Hamlet nahi, Othello nahi, wo kya hai? Wo I mean, don't try and act too 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 literary when you're not. Wo, wo huh? teen, wo, wo teen log kya karte uh, uh, when shall we meet again in fire, storm or in rain? Wo uski tarah hoti. Haan, 
और तुम अपने पे पैसा खर्च नहीं करती हो हमारे पे पैसा खर्च नहीं करती हो किसी पे भी पैसा खर्च नहीं करती हो we have no motivation to be doing this i certainly don't because i'm trolled in every episode and all kinds of fake news is spread about me so i mean make it worth my while please yes okay tata bye bye thank you see you all soon like share subscribe ciao